commutativity and associativity, rules of replacement. These rules admittedly aren't the most exciting, but they are important and they save us quite a bit of time. They're also intuitive. They mirror ways that we really think and talk about the world, particularly ways that we don't usually think about. Commutativity is a rule that tells us the order doesn't matter for and or or. P and Q is the same as Q and P. P or Q is the same as Q or P. That's a rule that we operate with in our daily speech all the time. Associativity is perhaps even more intuitive since we don't say parentheses out loud. P and Q and R is unsurprisingly the same as P and Q and R. Same with either P or Q or R and either P or Q or R, though we can hear that a little bit with the either's. As a rule of replacement, commutativity, like associativity, tells us about two logical equivalents. It is not describing a mini argument like a rule of inference. Rather, P and Q and Q and P have the same truth value. Whatever differences of nuance there might be between those statements in English don't exist in logic. As far as we're concerned, these are exactly the same. Likewise with P or Q and Q or P. That means you can go back and forth from the left side to the right and the right side to the left. You can apply these rules to whole lines and you can apply them to any part of a line. This rule simply says that you can flip P from the left to the right and Q from the right to the left and vice versa with AND or OR. The order just isn't relevant. Simple inputs A and B give us A and B is the same as B and A and A or B is the same as B or A. More complicated inputs can still be used. Let's put in if A then B for P and either B or C for Q. Well, we get if A then B is the same, if A then B and either B or C is the same as either B or C and if A then B. We also get if A then B or either B or C is the same as either B or C or if A then B. Here we flipped these statements around the main operator. If we wanted to though, we could look at that B or C in Q and we could flip that into C or B. And if we really wanted to, we could use commutativity twice and do both, flipping around the main operator and that secondary V. That gives us four sets of logically equivalent statements for each version of commutativity. In all of them, all we've done is change the order. The order doesn't matter. Note, however, that we cannot apply commutativity to the conditional. The order does matter in if A then B. Let's look at associativity. When you have only AND, you can move parentheses around from covering the first two variables to the second two variables and from covering the second two to the first two. Same thing with only V. Note, however, that it must be all AND or all V to use associativity. A mix like P and Q or R would not work. That's actually one of the most common errors with this rule. Let's plug in some inputs to see how associativity works. Well, A and B and C is the same as A and B and C, and A or B or C is the same as A or B or C. No surprise there. What about with more complicated inputs? Not A, B and C, and C or D. Well, we're going to get some really complicated looking sentences, but associativity can help us make some sense of them. First, let's just take those highlighted parentheses and move them over. All we've done is change the order around those ampersands. We've taken the parentheses from around this statement and put them around this statement. Likewise, we can do the same thing if we replace those ands with ors, we take those parentheses and we move them. 
With both of these rules, the operator must be all AND or all V. They never work with conditional or biconditional. As rules of replacement, they apply in both directions to any whole line or partial line. With these rules, you cite one line and result in another with all the same sentence letters and operators. Commutativity changes the order of conjuncts or disjuncts, while associativity changes the location of parentheses. Let's see some translations. Let's put in pigeons or birds, quails or birds, robins or birds for P, Q, and R. Well, pigeons and quails are birds, so quails and pigeons are birds, and vice versa. Either pigeons or quails are birds means the same as either quails or pigeons are birds. And pigeons are birds and quails and robins are birds is the same as pigeons and quails are birds and robins are birds. Pigeons are birds or either quails or robins are birds is the same as either pigeons or quails are birds or robins are birds. These rules are ones that definitely don't give you any surprises with translations. The truth tables are just as unsurprising. Q and P and P and Q have the exact same truth table as do P or Q and Q or P. And in associativity, the truth tables are longer, but no less equivalent and no more surprising. Let's take a look at correct use of commutativity and associativity. Without these rules, this proof might be rather hard, but with them, it's easy. P and Q and R is the same as P and R and Q. Well, let's use commutativity and let's switch these, the order of these variables around inside the parentheses. Now let's use associativity and move the parentheses from the second two variables to the first. And just like that, we're done. Let's take a look at a slightly harder example. If, if either P or not Q, then R and not S. Premise 2, either not R or not Q or P. Premise 3, R. Therefore, not S and R. If we look backwards, the first thing we'll notice is that we're a commutativity away from having our conclusion be the same thing as the consequent of an antecedent. That's a good sign that we might want to modus ponens. And look at that, we're a commutativity and an associativity away from having the antecedent of that conditional. If only we could get rid of not R, well, maybe a disjunctive syllogism will do the job. So our first step is going to be isolating not R with associativity. We'll move the parentheses and now we've got not R by itself. We'll go ahead and do a commutativity as well so that the right side of our disjunction matches the antecedent of the conditional. Now we do need double negation for line 3, another commonly skipped rule. That will allow us to use disjunctive syllogism and get either P or Q. Now modus ponens gets us almost all the way and commutativity finishes the job. Because these rules are relatively simple and not very exciting, they are frequently misused or ignored. Here are some common errors. First, using commutativity or associativity with arrow. That doesn't work. Second, using associativity on lines that mix ampersand and V. A very common error, and again, it does not work. Finally, simply skipping commutativity or associativity. This is extremely common because we skip over this step in our everyday life all the time. We rarely think of the order as mattering, but it's important to do in logic. So let's take a look at trying to use commutativity or associativity with an arrow and see why it doesn't work. First, if P then Q and if Q then P are simply not logical equivalents. If it's raining, then the ground is wet does not mean the same thing as saying if the ground is wet, then it's raining. As we saw with modus ponens and modus tollens, there's a lot of ways for the rain to be going, or for rain and wet ground to not track perfectly. It's a little bit more complicated with the arrows, but 
they just don't have the same truth table. For example, when P and Q and R are all false, line 1 is true, but line 2 is false. If you don't believe me, take a look at the truth table. We aren't going to go in depth in this truth table because that would take a long time, but if you're not sure about this, feel free to pause the video, copy down or screenshot the truth table yourself, and investigate this one further. Or you can simply agree that this truth table proves that you cannot use associativity with the arrow. This error is extremely common. You might take something like P and either Q or R and turn it into P and Q or R with associativity. This is what I would call, if something looks too easy, it probably is. Here, line one tells us through simplification that P is definitely true, and either Q or R is also definitely true. Line two, however, tells us that either P and Q are both true, or R is true. It, however, doesn't tell us which. These are not logical equivalents at all, because they give us completely different information. They could both be true, they could both be false. We don't know, they're very separate information. We can see that with the translation as well. You might say, I'm going to have a salad and either ranch or Thousand Island dressing. Perfectly normal. But you could also say with line two, either I'm going to have a salad and ranch or Thousand Island dressing, perhaps by itself. That's a pretty different sentence. It gives us a very different idea of what your options are and what your tastes are. Finally, the very most common thing is skipping commutativity or associativity, especially commutativity. This proof, you might be tempted to go from if P, then either Q or R, and it's not the case that either R or Q, straight to modus tollens. You know that Q or R matches R or Q, and so you just say not P and be on your way. But you need commutativity. Why? First of all, logic's just a game with rules. Follow them if you want to play. Second, computer language requires perfectly exact inputs. And honestly, so do people who don't trust you. And those are what logic is for. Finally, if you have an extremely complicated sentence, it may not be obvious. In that way, commutativity and associativity can be logically relevant rules, rather than just grammatical house cleaning. Let's take a look at this. If you were able to do six or seven commutativities and associativities in your head, you might go straight to not P with modus tollens. Because this entire long, horrible thing that is the antecedent, the consequent of the conditional, and is negated in line two, really do match. But in life, as in logic, sometimes the order of things is so tangled up it can be hard to see that two things really are the same. With commutativity and associativity, we're about to see that these are the same. First, we'll use commutativity around that highlighted and, and we'll switch the order of the left and right sides. Now we'll use a commutativity around the highlighted V to switch A and not C. Associativity will move the parentheses, and commutativity will go again, and a final associativity will make line seven and the left side of the consequent in line one match up. Commutativity around that ampersand, and then commutativity around that V makes the right side match up. Now we can do our modus ponens. It took quite a few steps, but it turns out that those things were equivalent after all. And for most of us, it wasn't at all obvious.